Hi, this is Keith with Alien Drones. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Always appreciate it. It's really good to see you. So today I wanted to go through a little bit about the DJI Mavic Mini and the FAA regulations that are going to be applied to it. DJI has done a little bit of a disservice in that they've come out with this 249 gram drone to apparently skirt the laws of the FAA and make it easier to just fly this thing anywhere you want to go with no rules or regulations because it's too small apparently to cause damage or to be looked at by the FAA. So what I want to do is talk about the regulations a little bit that apply and those that don't. So that if you do buy one of these new mini drone category type drones, you know actually what you're supposed to do and what you're not. So here we go. This is my first day in the new studio. I hope you like it. Uh, I am going to be doing more with the lights. I've got a lot of acoustical foam. You can see some of it behind me here. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I've been trying to uh, work on this for a while. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, I, so far, it's pretty cool. I love having the extra space. If I'm doing a product review or something, I've got nice areas you can see to do that. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I want your comments. So as I mentioned, I think DJI has done a little bit of a disservice in that they're targeting this uh, marketing saying that this drone is actually the everyday fly cam and fly as you are, quote unquote. And it seems like they were targeting people that uh, are beginners for drone flying, which is unfortunate because they've taken this 249 grams and seized on the fact that at 249 grams, it is under the 250 gram minimum that requires that the drone be registered with the FAA. So along with lack of registration, some people are incorrectly assuming that you actually don't have to worry about all those other pesky regulations, all the things that the recreational flyers of above 250 grams will have to abide by, or 107 pilots the same, and you can just do anything with it. It won't be a problem. You don't have to take the test when it's upcoming for uh, recreational pilots. You won't have to worry about uh, flying at night, flying over people. Uh, over cars, uh, any of those types of regulations, uh, controlled airspace. And that's simply not really the case. So I'm going to go through the regulations as they apply to this new drone class, uh, particularly the FAA regulations for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one real basic because I did do uh, a lengthy video describing the rules and regulations and I'll put that video up here uh, because those rules and regs are still going to give you more detail if you want more detail on the regulations themselves and some of the ways to find control airspaces and things like that. Uh, but this one, I won't go into that level of detail. Just visit that video if you want more detail. Okay, so here we go. Rule number one. First, simply going to start with the registration, which is going to be the first step if you're going to get a new drone and you're going to want to fly it in the, in the airspace at all. So we're going to go to the register site of the FAA and we do notice right away that they talk about how you're going to register your drone and what uh, values of weight are going to be considered as requirements for being registered. So right away when we go to the site, we're going to notice that the FAA requires registration for drones that are 0.55 pounds or 250 grams and heavier or 55 pounds or 25 kilograms or less. Now, if you see the uh, advertisements and the specs from DJI on the Mavic Mini, you'll notice that it comes in at a meager 249 grams, apparently to skirt the registration requirement from the FAA. Now, this is true. You do not have to register the Mini drone with the FAA. It's $5 for three years, certainly not that expensive. I guess if you don't want to have your number on it and have it traceable in some way, yes, at the moment, that's true, you do not have to register this drone. However, my guess is, it's only a guess, is that the FAA is going to see this attempt by DJI to skirt the regulations so they can actually identify an owner of a drone uh, without having to do a serial number search and things like that. And they're actually going to change that down and make it more difficult. Either they remove the lower limit or they will actually lower it down to where it'll be much more difficult and the Mavic Mini, for instance, still won't fit. But again, that's only my guess, so that, that is not the case right now. Right now, you do not have to register this drone, number one. So the next part, we're going to go through the actual rules and regulations. 
and what regulations apply based on the weight class. Now, I did contact the FAA specifically about this weight class of drones just to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting it, and I wanted to make sure I was giving you valid info. So when I contacted the FAA and asked them specifically about a 249 gram drone, the mini class that had just come out, they said that yes, indeed, they will still have to follow the community guidelines for safety as any other drone. So what I did is I went to the site here and uh, you'll notice here under this section, it talks about uh, the rules and regulations, but it says weighing less than 55 pounds. You'll notice that there is no minimum for the drones in this section as far as the safety rules. So what that means is anything under 55 pounds is still going to be governed by the FDA rules and regulations. No minimum limit. So for this, we're just going to go over right to the FAA site and run down the rules that are going to be required for the drones. Uh, for recreational pilots, even with the mini drone. So one, register your drone. Now we know that's not true. We know that registering your drone is only gonna be required for below the 250 grams. So the Mavic Mini would not apply. You wouldn't have to register it. Cool. Number two, fly only for recreational purposes. Number three, follow the safety guidelines of a community-based organization. And what that kind of means is that in general, be safe. You're going to have a plan and you're going to follow it with regard to safety. So let's leave it at that for now. Number four, fly your drone at or below 400 feet when in uncontrolled or class G airspace. Now this is uncontrolled airspace. So 400 feet or below. So that means even if you're in uncontrolled airspace, you can't go as high as the drone will go, go up into the jet stream. You have to keep it below 400 feet, 100% of the time. Now for 107 pilots, there is an exception when you're by buildings and towers and things like that for recreational pilots, ground level 400 feet is the maximum period. There's no exception. Number five, do not fly in any controlled airspace. And this means around and above many airports, unless you receive an authorization for operations in a controlled airspace through the LANC system. Now this is where it's really nice in that recently the FAA has actually applied the LANC system to recreational pilots. Now again, I did do a video uh, on the LANC system and how you actually get those authorizations. So click through that video if you want to know how it works. And I actually used AirMap, but Kitty Hawk does it as well. So, you know, take your pick. Uh, but it does actually work pretty slick, gives you real-time authorizations in most cases. Six, keep your drone within line of sight. Seven, do not fly in airspace where flight is prohibited. Now this is talking about uh, military operation zones, for instance, where it's a prohibited site, restricted areas, or even if there's a temporary restriction, such as a forest fire, there's emergency vehicles, uh, the president is coming to your area and they actually put a temporary ban, a TFR, a temporary flight restriction on the area. Uh, so watch for those. Now one nice thing is most of those are going to pop up in uh, your air map. Uh, so, or before you fly, you're going to be able to see those restrictions or the NOTAMs, which is the notice to airmen. Really be careful if there's a restricted area, especially if you're used to flying in an area that you're familiar with. And now for some reason, there is a temporary restriction. It can be very expensive, upwards of $10,000 if you get caught and there's an emergency uh, vehicle or emergency restriction. There's some services going on, firefighters, what have you and you fly, it's very expensive and you'll make the national news. So if you want to get your face on the news, that's one good way to do it. Just don't. It's not good for anybody. It's not good for the emergency responders. It's not good for the drone industry overall. So look for those TFRs and NOTAMs before you fly, even in an area you're familiar with. Just takes a second. Eight, never fly near another aircraft, especially near airports. So you always yield to aircraft, manned or unmanned. And that includes heliporters or heliports, for instance. You don't have to notify, there is no link system for heliports, but you do have to be aware of those. Always scan the sky, always look for aircraft that are in the area, and you must yield to those aircraft. Number nine, never fly over groups of people, public events, or stadiums full of people. Number 10, kind of a takeoff of number seven, Never fly near emergencies such as any type of accident response, law enforcement activities, firefighting, or hurricane recovery efforts. So even if there's not a TFR, if you see a big area that's got big forest fires, just stay down. Uh, don't, uh, don't launch the drone, even if it's the mini. Uh, it can cause damage and it will stop the uh, 
services from actually performing. So firefighters will actually have to pull the planes and, and helicopters, the water dispersing vehicles they have in the air, they'll actually have to ground them. And if at your house that was on fire, you'd want that not to happen. So please uh, pay attention. If there's something going on in your area, uh, just use common sense. And last, never fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And uh, one tip they always uh, say for 107 pilots is eight hours uh, lips to tips, uh, which means it doesn't matter if uh, normally if you if you have a, uh, a blood alcohol content when you're driving a car, for instance, that isn't the same with any aircraft, including drone piloting. You need to have zero in your system. They want eight hours between. So if you go out for lunch and have a beer with your buddies, and then you go out and take your drone out at supper time, even though you didn't have a beer and you have any alcohol in your system and something happens. It, it flies away and goes into an airplane engine or it crashes on somebody and causes great harm or death to somebody, you will be responsible. So drugs and alcohol, very important. So eight hours between the time you consume anything and you actually fly that drone and pilot it. So keep that in mind. Now there is one thing that's coming up and that is for recreational pilots, you are actually going to have to take a test. Sorry, it is not out yet as of the uh, printing of this video. However, when it is, I will uh, go ahead and take the information from that test. I'll actually go through it and I will do a video to help you out, to help you study for it if you need to. Uh, even though I'm 107 certified, uh, I want to help the drone industry out. So when that video is out, if you've hit subscribe, so go ahead and do that now, it will notify you when that's available. And then you will know right away, you'll get a heads up for that test when it's available. And I'll give you all the information hopefully you need to do that without any problems. Anyway, that's all I have. I'm gonna keep this one short. Again, don't forget there's the other videos on the link system. Uh, actually, the more detail on the rules and regulations. And when the actual test is out for recreational pilots, I'll put that link up here as well. So, uh, or in the description. Uh, so be sure to check back as well. As always, if you found anything of value in this video, please hit the like. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe, I really appreciate it. it. Let's me know that I'm doing something worthwhile. So with that, until next time, good flying.